Welcome to Gathering Place Podcast. On this podcast, you will hear sermon recaps, meaningful conversations, and in-depth teaching. We hope today's episode ignites and equips you to live out your Christian faith and to bring healing to a broken world. Hey, welcome back to Gathering Place Podcast. Uh, It's been a few months since we've uh, been able to get back on here and do sermon recaps, adding additional content throughout the week. So thanks for being patient uh, with me. We've had a lot of good things going on here um, at Gathering Place Church. Uh, some things in my life personally have changed too. Um, Brianna and I have added our third beautiful baby, our baby boy, uh, Luke Garrett Cusick, and he uh, is almost three months and has such um, enriched our life as we have adapted and grown and uh, welcomed him into our family. So we're a family of five and loving every minute of it. Um, if you haven't heard the news either, we've also um, uh, shared the exciting news that as a ministry, as a church, we've been able to purchase uh, the additional uh, three acres that are connected to our church campus. Uh, right now, it is a trucking facility. Um, and our, our major plans, as you can see, are um, pictured over to my uh, left or right, whatever uh, side we put it on. Um, uh, you can see that it'll be turned into a beautiful 8,000 square foot, 400 seat sanctuary um, with all the amenities needed to uh, welcome and the church growth that uh, is here, that's coming. Uh, so stay apart. You can always check out gatheringplacechurch.com to stay connected. Join us for a service, watch sermons online if you um, aren't here with us in person. Uh, but I shared with our congregation on Sunday, um, we're in a series at the church uh, on red flags in relationships. Specifically, we're calling it explicit, that the word of God is clear, um, it doesn't miss words, and uh, we want to take the explicit scripture and wisdom that's provided to us and, and preach it boldly, preach the whole counsel of God's word, preach it uh, explicitly, expound on God's word, and encourage people this Valentine's Day, this February season where the whole world is talking about love, uh, is searching for love, is looking for love. And we know God's word um, teaches us how to how to love and how to be loved. Uh, so I want to share ad- additional red flags today that I didn't get to Sunday, and open it back up, revisit, re-engage with our, our podcast family um, as I plan to do here through this series. So um, so excited to get into the content today. I uh, would encourage you to jot some notes down. Maybe watch this before Valentine's Day if you're married. Uh, believe in this will encourage your marriage. If you're, if you're engaged or looking to get married, I believe in this will uh, bless you today as well. But Gathering Place podcast, explicit series. Let's jump in today. Well, I want to look specifically at three red flags um, that I, I want to get out in the open and, and believe in that they'll encourage you. But um, I want to share this with you. And this is a quote from Tertullian, who was a church father um, in the early apostolic church. And he uh, had a lot to say on marriage. But I love this quote. It says, How beautiful then the marriage of two Christians, two who are one in the home, one in desire, one in the way of life they follow, one in the religion they practice. Nothing divides them, either in flesh or in spirit. They pray together. They worship together. They fast together, instructing one another, encouraging one another, and strengthening one another. Side by side, they visit God's church and partake of God's banquet. Side by side, they face difficulties and persecution, share their consolations, They have no secrets from one another. They never shun each other's company. They never bring sorrow to each other, to each other's hearts. Seeing this, Christ rejoice. To such as these, he gives his peace. Where there are two together, there also he is present. And that's Tertullian, who was in uh, 150 
the era of 150 AD. And I believe those words ring true today on the importance of being one. And as the two are side by side and and you're working on yourself, that um, you're becoming uh, strong in Christ, you're growing in character and in purity and integrity, um, that if uh, the two come together in one, there Christ is present, blessing and, and, and bestowing grace and giving you what you have need of in the sacrament, in the mystery of marriage. But I want to look at a few red flags, I encourage you today that don't buy these lies um, about marriage, about relationships. And um, the first one I want to look at today, uh, this red flag, this lie that can destroy your relationships, is I can change him or her. That both parties, even in a dating relationship, if you go into it and you're in the first month of that relationship and you're already saying, I can change him or her, that's a red flag. Um, I would also say it this way, don't flirt to convert, <laughs> right? Don't think that uh, if you just show them the love of Christ, that something will magically change or poof, you know, things will change. That's that's a very shaky way, a very scary foundational um, approach forward in your relationship. You know, we've got to understand that uh, there's two imperfect people coming together. So you're going to have issues. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have to have things that you work through. And in the middle of thinking through these, uh, you know, can I change this person? You've got to be careful not to get a critical spirit, not to begin to complain. Because complaining feels good in the moment, but it doesn't change anything. And a lot of the times I encourage couples and people that if you're saying, I want him to change, then you be the first to initiate the change or you begin to look uh, inward or look at yourself because a marriage is two people. So if you're saying it's always their fault and always pointing out their flaws, rest assured there's something in you that can be changing that could unlock your situation. So I would say pray. First, you've got to pray. You've got to look at yourself and then you've got to pray and say, God, is there anything in me that needs to change? And you've got to understand this as well as you can't change anybody. I can't change anybody. It's only the Holy Spirit, the conviction of God upon man that can change a person's heart. James 5.16 says this, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and it is effective. So as you begin to pray, you're enacting the power of God into the situation. Prayer may or may not change your spouse, but prayer always changes you. Every time you pray, you might not see change there, but guess what? Maybe you're so uptight. Maybe um, you're not flexible. Maybe you're controlling. And as you pray, guess what? You loosen the reins a little bit. You become less controlling. You begin trusting God in this area with your spouse or in your relationship. And you begin to change. Say, hey, I was riding him pretty hard. Or I was I was too controlling with her or whatever it, it may be. And so I love what the psalm says. Psalms 139, 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there is any offensive, I like this, if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. We want to change our attitude. We want to build confidence in our relationships and in our marriage. We want to forgive. We want to be less critical. We want to be less controlling. And we want to say, Holy Spirit, heal my hurting heart. You know, I I think of this lie, this red flag of I can change him or her. Don't fall into this and don't go in it thinking that, I'll have the tools or solutions or a different season, a different situation. If we have a baby, if we do X, Y, Z, those are scary places to be. And I would encourage you, first and foremost, you've got to pray and you've got to say, Holy Spirit, change me. Look at yourself first and then pray that the Holy Spirit would get a hold of the area in that person's life that you're believing change. Another lie we can believe 
is that it's 50-50, right? That if they do 50 and I do 50, then, you know, we just do our part. We stay in our lane. Um, all will work out. Now, there's this quote when it comes to working things out. And um, it's actually about stress. And it says that stress is uh, working hard for something that you don't care about. So when you work hard for something, you go to a job every day, you're in a relationship, you're putting in the work, but there's not a compassion and empathy, a care for what you're doing. The end goal is stress. But when you work hard for something you care about, you are convicted, you, you are committed, um, be it your job, be it your dream, so when you're working hard for something that you care about, it equals passion. And a lot of marriages are passionless. A lot of relationships are passionless. And you need to reevaluate. Stop just clocking in and clocking out of your relationship. Stop just checking the boxes and say, you know what? I'm going to work hard for this, but I, it's not going to be a work that stresses me. It's going to be a work that uh, inflicts passion inflicts care and empathy and love and commitment, especially in a relationship. This is why Paul says in Ephesians, husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and he gave himself up for her. It's one of the most daunting thing as men, as husbands, will ever do is say, guess what? As head of the home, as head of my wife, it comes with being a servant, with being willing to serve, being someone that she will gladly want to submit to because I am submitted to Christ. So you've got to understand a half-hearted effort plus half-hearted commitment will equal in wholehearted disappointment. A half-hearted effort plus half-hearted commitment will equal wholehearted disappointment. This is the red flag of I, I coast, I drift, I'm 50, they're 50, and it will always let you down. But that logic sounds good, it seems right, but it is profoundly dangerous. So we've got to understand that um, the lie of I can change him or her, or I'll do 50, they do 50, uh, it will let you down. But we've got to understand that Whatever you're working toward, care deeply, and it won't end in stress, but it will end in passion and invigorate your relationships. Thirdly, I want to look at that this one little thing isn't a big, a big thing. Where we undervalue, we undermine um, the little things in our relationships that eat at us, that we just put under the cover, that little addiction, that little... Um, that little spending habit, um, that little what, just uh, that little drink, that little piece of music, uh, that movie I watch, whatever it is, just it's just this little part that you know isn't going to hurt anything. But see, most of us, it's not the big things that get us all at once, but it's consistent wrong choices, consistent little things that go unaddressed. You know, there's. Um, with this red flag, there's a scripture that I've always clung to that says you've got to, the little things are actually the big things. Um, but Songs of Solomon, Songs 215 says, catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. Your marriages should be blossoming. Your marriage should be blooming. Your relationship, God created it to be that way. And Songs of Solomon is saying that these little foxes are the ones that nibble at the root of your vine. And if you don't catch them, then you will be mistaken. You will be let down time and time again, those little foxes that nibble, that nibble. Eventually, your structure, that vine, will grow weak and can't hold itself and will crumble and will fall. So you want your relationship to be strong and to be blessed and to be fruitful and these little foxes, when they would do it, if you if you look, they actually burrow under the ground to get to the root system. So these little things, they go for your roots because they know that that's how you're going to stand. It could be the little things of a lustful thought, a critical spirit, that secret spending habit. 
and you're just missing it. And here's what here's how we handle these little foxes. And please, these this can be basic, but we miss it. Is we've got to confess our sin. James 5:16 says, "Therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed." We are wounded people. Sin leaves a wound, it leaves a scar, and we've got to take the medicine of confession especially in our relationship and our marriage and don't let things go by don't let secrets um, persist but confess them and be healed as the scripture says because you can't manage your sin you have to confess your sin please don't think oh i can manage it i have it compartmentalized that's that part that won't hurt no you can't manage it you have to confess it to jesus and then you have to have the hard conversation with your spouse. And let me say this. If you're on the other end of a confession in a marriage, understand that the reason the confession is happening is because that person wants help. That person wants to grow. That person wants to change. That it's better that the confession happen there than you stumble upon something or you come to the knowledge of something that was secret and hidden that your spouse didn't bring up or that in the relationship wasn't brought up by you, that secret sin, but instead it was discovered hidden and, and caused a greater degree of hurt, a greater degree of pain. And I'm not belittling that when that confession comes, it might hurt you, it might startle you, it might strike you, but understand that that is the proper way to find healing in your relationship or heal from that unconfessed sin, unrepented sin. And I want to leave you with this, that in these red flags of, Again, these were just three that I see people get miscon- misconceptions with that. I can change him or her. I'll put in my 50, you put in your 50. And then, you know, uh, the little things really don't matter. These are red flags we've got to address that we can't take lightly. And know today there is hope for your marriage. Um, and I want to take a second and just acknowledge that there are some rough marriages. Maybe you're in a rough season or a rough patch. Maybe you've disconnected. Maybe there's not sexual integrity. Maybe there isn't that intimacy emotionally, socially, sexually that's taking place. I don't, I don't know what it is or what the hurdle, circumstance, or block is. But know this, um, that if you will let God love you in the middle of your pain, I, I say this is many times when the pain comes in a relationship or a marriage, we become distant, we detract, we isolate. But in the point of your pain, Scripture says perfect love casts out fear. And you've got to say, Holy Spirit, here is the pain, the problem, the peril I'm going through, and I need the hope, help, and healing of the Holy Spirit So you've got to open yourself up and say, Holy Spirit, love me right here in the middle of my pain. I'm not running like Adam and Eve did in shame, guilt, condemnation. But I need the Holy Spirit to love me right here in my weakness, love me in my pain, and bring transformation and change. Matthew 19, 26 says this. With God, all things are possible. With Him on your team, with Him on your side, It's two coming together with Christ, the three of you, the three of us. Um, You know, there's hope for your marriage and for your relationship. So know this today. Don't fall prey to these red flags. The devil is a liar. A God-honoring marriage is possible. It isn't a fairy tale, but it is a choice. And you've got to make the choice today to keep Jesus at the center, to put in the hard work, the sacrifice, the apologies, the forgiveness, The devil is a liar. He is the father of lies. He will tell you it won't work. He'll tell you it can't. But if you will put in the work and allow that work not to lead to stress but to passion, allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, listen to the red flags in the beginning of your relationship. If you're in the marriage now, get out of these mindsets, snap out of them, get to reality. We talked of Sunday and and with this scripture that Proverbs 27, 12, that the, the prudent see danger and they avoid it. But the simpleton, the unthinking person, sees trouble and runs into it. So don't be foolish today. Be wise 
and see the danger signs, see the red flags, and understand that the Holy Spirit will make up what is in you in your weakness. If you will turn to him, let him love you in the middle of whatever the pain is, and God will be closer than you think. God bless. Gathering Place Podcast. We'll see you next week. Thank you.